this afternoon I was I started reading a compilation of Bhikkhu Bodhi's essays <clears throat> and uh, at the beginning was uh, there was a um, say an account um, a biography uh, of uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi and uh, there's something that I read that really struck me. <clears throat> so he was talking about the, because um, he was a, um, a, I mean, he did his PhD in philosophy, so he was, was uh, uh, say, already well-versed in, in uh, philosophy in, and had a religious inclination, although he was dissatisfied with Judaism and not very compelled by Christianity. And then he came across <clears throat> Buddhism and he was very much drawn to Buddhism. But then he, he mentioned something that, that really struck me in that he said <clears throat> um, a feeling of tremendous confidence <clears throat> in the uh, in the teachings of the of the Buddha <clears throat> and one of the um, things that really solidified it was uh, uh, him reading the uh, sutta the uh, Sigalaka Sutta, which is a uh, uh, it's in the Diga Nikaya Long Discourses, and and uh, it's a <clears throat> it's instructions to a young man uh, how to basically how to live a good life, and it's an easy sutta to overlook if you're if you're thinking in terms of what are the <coughs> sort of higher philosophies, what are the uh, practices of Buddhism, because it's it's really about yeah how to li live a really skillful and complete life, and what are the different duties that one uh, ha <coughs> have to fulfill um, a, a, a truly skillful life. And, uh, <clears throat> but how uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi put it was is what really struck him was that, um, that, that really convinced him that, that, that say the Buddha had a full command of both ascendant wisdom, say, uh, teachings that pertain to uh, the highest truths. <coughs> but then also uh, had a full command of uh, descending wisdom uh, in that uh, wisdom that was applied to uh, how one lives, uh, how one, how one, how one uh, implements a uh, uh, a uh, a full life, and yeah, to me that was it. Really struck me as as uh, <clears throat> say, especially for somebody who is a uh, say a philosophy student, um, and not just being drawn to the. Um, say, um, refined or abstruse truths, but how is it lived? How is it, how is it implemented? Uh, how does one carry it through into day-to-day -day life? And uh, because that's, that's something that, that is really important, and it's, it's uh, something I certainly feel that, that uh, re uh, resonated with me in Rem because of, of my own experience of contact with, with Ajahn Chah. 
because he was uh, certainly someone who uh, was very comfortable with speaking of and, and, and dwelling in higher truths. Um, but he was also uh, very down to earth and, and very uh, <coughs> accomplished in, in how to guide people in, 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 in through the, um, yeah, through, through the, the, the world and the, the, uh, and that was something that, that, uh, struck me in my very first visit to Ajahn Chah's monastery when I was just a newly ordained monk, um, seeing the, well, tremendous commitment to, to practice and training and, and uh, a kind of a, a, a a peace and command of, of uh, say, ease that he had with, with everything uh, that was happening around him. But then, also how he uh, obviously taught and trained, uh, not just his monastics, but uh, the lay community, so that the lay community was committed to to practice and training and and plugging into to the uh, uh, plugging into the the practice and training and plugging into how do we live this Buddhist life and, and uh, so I think that that's it's something that that is worthy of reflection and what are the you know, when the Buddha talks about uh, the middle way, um, there's just so many nuances to this middle way of the Buddhas. It's both a, say, a middle way of practice, a middle way of living, a middle way of view, uh, and, uh, and so that what is the middle way is, is, uh, has really, really wide applications. And of course it's, again, it, it comes back to a very, a very practical basis. Um, it's like Ajahn Chah once said, most simply this is the practice to be free of suffering in the cycle of birth and death. And, uh, and you know one can interpret that as as both a, 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 a say the cycle of birth and death of samsara uh, being this round of birth and t taking that on a cosmological scale, but also it's really about moment to moment um, the birth and death of our moods, and the birth and death of our thoughts and thought patterns, habit patterns, and, and how do we be free of suffering within that? And that's, that is, a, again, this, this middle way. Uh, it encompasses from the minute experience of a, of a mind moment to the <clears throat> Yeah, expansion and contraction of world systems. Uh, I'd say uh, something to be uh, really reflected on, and how do we apply that? How do we live it? Um, and certainly, the the uh, that sense of of uh, recognizing. Um, the limitations of samsara, this cycle of birth and death, and because the uh, say the, the the literal 
meaning of the word samsara is, is, it just literally means wandering on. And yeah, we spend so much time wandering on, kind of wandering on, wandering aimlessly, um, whether it's you know, as we sit down to meditation, we try to try to uh, uh, put our minds into a, a place of, of mindfulness and clear comprehension, and uh, it keeps wandering on. Uh, or the the uh, uh, seemingly random and pointless ways that time just keeps passing, and you know what did we accomplish? What did we do? What's the purpose of it all? Uh, so that 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 is you know, say samsara. That is this cycle of, of birth and death and how do we how do we bring meaning and comprehension and and, and freedom uh, within that and of course that's where the Buddha says and, and certainly Ajahn Chah as well over and over again it's uh, this paying attention to the felt sense of how we live that how do we be free of suffering uh, and that uh, that sense of, of paying attention to the experiential realm. What what's the nature of the experience and in our day to day life in our overarching uh, kind of path of our life and the uh, that sense of of recognizing, understanding. It's like with with the the Ajahn Chah. Uh, so often he would be pointing out the purpose of say of keeping precepts, whether it's monastic precepts or lay precepts. Uh, the purpose of precepts, of course, was to create a, a life that was harmless, and not creating harm, not creating uh, difficulty and problems for ourselves and for others, but also to have a, to be able to use it as a tool for understanding intention or volition within the mind. It's like create, with, with having a a particular form of skillful speech and action, uh, just creating a bit of a break or a buffer so that we can really start to see more clearly what, what what's the mind doing what, what's the what's the what's the movement of mind uh, behind our actions, our speech, our compulsions, our habits, uh, and to be able to see more clearly that, that the nature of the volition, because we're, um, it's as the Buddha is saying, it's as long as we're being compelled by the kind of root uh, defilements of mind, of greed, hatred, delusion. Then we're gonna, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep creating problems and difficulties for ourselves and others. We're gonna keep suffering. Uh, the uh, the idiom that the the Buddha uses, you know, bound by ignorance and obstructed by craving. It's a, that kind of of. Uh, the kind of sh shackles that are uh, holding us back are just the internal lack of understanding, lack of seeing clearly, uh, and then you know, compulsively following. Um, and, uh, and it takes clear seeing, clear knowledge, 
Um, and of course, learning how to study the teachings. There's, there's like Ajahn Chah saying, first you have to know the Dhamma. And it's like, get a good grasp of the teachings, get a, a fundament, the fundamentals of the teachings. Down here, know the Dhamma. Then you have to see the Dhamma. There's that sense of starting to see clearly, with that cultivation of mindfulness, clear comprehension, cultivation of, of peace and tranquility, a cultivation of wise discernment, and seeing the Dhamma. And then you have to be the Dhamma. Uh, and that, and so you really have to live it, embodying it. And so that, that, uh, that, that sense of this is, this is what the practice is, this is what the training is. Uh, and and you know, pointed out by the Buddha, pointed out by all the uh, good teachers. And, and same, I certainly had the good fortune to um, have close contact with and to live with Ajahn Chah uh, as, as my teacher. And that yeah, commitment to uh, to sila, to virtue, to integrity, and commitment to to uh, you know, meditation and and training and mindfulness and and uh, settling the mind, composing the mind, uh, seeing the value in in the in the, in the mind in the heart that is really inclines to stillness rather than to uh, uh, stirring the mind up in, in various ways. I mean, let's say that like modern society, modern technology is, 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 is all about stirring the mind up. Uh, and, and the chasing after all the various belongings and possessions that, that people clutter their lives with. Uh, and it stirs the mind up, it doesn't settle it. So that, that yeah, commitment to simplicity, uh, having that uh, a sense of simplicity and contentment as a, a as a a place of refuge in the heart, and finding that that is actually delightful. Uh, this, this, that sense of delight that comes from uh, uh, you know, simplicity and contentment, <clears throat> and allowing that to gain momentum within the heart, so that. Uh, that's, that's what uh, um, really the, the experience of samadhi uh, is just a, a continuity of mindful simplicity and contentment. Uh, so I remember uh, um, um, Bhante Gunaratana, who's a, a, a very old and wise teacher and very accomplished in um, in his studies, but very accomplished in meditation as well. And him saying, for you know, to gain accomplishment in meditation, you can't have other hobbies. <laughs> it's, it's, you have to be willing to give yourself to the to the meditation, to the training, to the practice. Uh, and, uh, uh, you can't can't seek out more complication. So in this practice and training, uh, you know, we've got the opportunity to. live in the monastery, but 
whether one is living in the monastery, living in the world. And we've always got, we're always presented with options. And uh, to be skillful and wise in, in making, making the, in picking the options that are, are, are inclining to, to simplicity, to contentment. And because that's, that's really where a sense of, of deep delight and satisfaction come. And it's with that quality of heart that we can really um, learn how to, uh, and again, the, the, like a teaching of uh, Ajahn Chah and probably a, a, a real, really central part of Ajahn Chah's teaching, this, this teaching, and, uh, and of course it's a very simple teaching, just letting go. Uh, in Thai, the boy Wang, learn how to let go, to set down, to put aside. Um, so rather than picking more things up and holding them and um, yeah, cluttering the heart with things, just learning how to learning how to let go, learning how to not not grasping on to moods and thoughts and views and opinions and uh, biases and <clears throat> learning how to let go uh, and not learning how to let go of the uh, deeply habitual tendencies uh, that, that that plague plague the human heart uh, so it's learning how to let go and learning how to let go of the sense of of self, the sense of I making and my making, because that's the sense of I and me and mine is not, it's not inherent in the, uh, in the human condition. Um, it, it's created, it's made, we build it up and we carry it around and we you know, torture ourselves with it and, and uh, afflict others. <laughs> so it's a, 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 a learning how to let go, learning how to this, 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 this sense of, of, of the recognition of you know, letting go, putting it down, uh, seeing the, the, the drawback <clears throat> and seeing the benefit in, in letting go. Uh, because sometimes it's sort of, you know, you know uh, there's this Hesitation and fear. Oh dear! If I let go, I won't have anything. <laughs> and uh, and the reality is, uh, uh, you, you you gain tremendously by letting things go rather than you know, carrying carrying around uh, identity and identification and clinging and grasping. And one of the images that Ajahn Chah used is in, in, in a sense of letting go, and also the Buddha, of course, you know, the simile of the snake. Um, but that sense that you, yeah, you, you don't, you don't, of course, everybody know you see a snake, you, you, you almost have a visceral, uh, oh, can't pick it up, it's dangerous, especially if they're poisonous snakes. If you're, you know, say here in California, this rattlesnakes, or Thailand, uh, innumerable num numbers of, of uh, poisonous snakes. Because you, know, so, you know that the, the head is, is it can bite and it, 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 it's, it's poisonous, it's dangerous. And, but then also, just like, you think, uh, you know, it's easy, well, you know, it's that head's where the poison is, I could always pick it up by the tail. I said, no, it comes around and bites you just as easily. Uh, so that, uh, yeah, that, that, they're like clinging, grasping, and, and 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 not being willing to let go, you know, 
we see the the dangers or the pitfalls in say in suffering so we try not to pick it up but we don't see the dangers or pitfalls in say in happiness uh, the things that are pleasing to us because we cling in the same way but it's in the same it's like picking up the tail of the snake it still comes and bite comes around to bite you uh, in the, or and this thing say, okay, this is this is this is bad. This is problematic, but this is good, uh, and we hang on to this is good. It should be going to have to, uh, every, and f form. Uh, I mean, how many arguments start with people who are convinced that they're good or they're right? Uh, they're constantly, most of the bickering and fighting that goes on because. Somebody's good. Somebody's right. And it has to be good. So, but it's the clinging to it, and it still comes back around and bites and creates problems. So the the this this sense of of the uh, uh, looking on experience and just just looking on as a as a snake, and like Ajahn Chah would say. Uh, you know, when you see a snake in the forest, and, uh, and especially in, say, like in, say for when I was a monk in Thailand, uh, it's one of the reasons that you sweep the trail, sweep the paths, so that they're, I mean, they're nice and clean for you to walk on, but they're also nice and clean so that if you see snakes or centipedes or scorpions, um, you don't step on them, or you don't don't mess with them, and you can just you don't have to fight with them. You don't have to be fascinated by them. Uh, you see them, and you keep your keep your distance, keep your space. And and that is a is a letting go, uh, a letting go of either the impulses of of aversion or, or, or attraction, uh, letting go of the, the, the likes and dislikes, uh, letting go of the approval and disapproval that we have towards, towards the world. Um, so that's because that's what keeps, keeps us entangled, keeps us, keeps us bogged down. So then uh, learning how to Pay attention to letting go, but that letting go is is also uh, it has a foundation, and that foundation of of integrity, of virtue, of uh, of restraint, uh, uh, of of wise choices, uh, the foundation of a a peaceful, clear heart uh, that is steady. Yeah, and still, it has a it has a, a, a suitable foundation. So this whole practice is 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 supportive and leaning leading to to a letting go. Uh, but we do have to make the put the attention on being willing to to let go, to relinquish, uh, to or to not pick up, uh, not to get entangled. Um, and that's sort of seeing the value in peace. So I think that's, you know, say, more important to our heart, more important to our life than, say, than, than happiness, is actually peace. What, what's actually truly peaceful? What's actually really uh, liberating to the heart, and so that that quality of of peace is what is is really of highest value. So those are some reflection for the evening. I'll leave it that. I'll leave it that. I'll leave it that. I'll leave it that. I'll leave it that.